हेलो एवरी वन आई एम डॉक्टर एस के गुप्ता सीनियर कंसल्टेंट क्लिनिकल हेमाटोलॉजी बोनमेरो ट्रांसप्लांट एंड सेलर थेरेपी डिपार्टमेंट एट कॉन्टेंटल हॉस्पिटल ऑन दिस अकेजन आई वुड लाइक टू डिस्कस ऑन द बोनमेरो ट्रांसप्लांट मोर टूवर्ड्स द एलोजेनिक ट्रांसप्लांट वेयर द डोनर इज समबडी एल्स अदर शॉर्ट ऑफ ट्रांसप्लांट इज ऑटोलॉगस ट्रांसप्लांट आई थिंक दैट्स नॉट एन ए ट्रांसप्लांट एक्चुअली इट्स जैसे हाई डोज रेस्क्यू थेरेपी सो लेट्स मूव ऑन द एक्चुअल ट्रांसप्लांट विच इज द एलोजेनिक ट्रांसप्लांट so we do the allogenic transplant in case there is a defective bone marrow defective immune system and this bone marrow defect and the immune system defect can happen because of the cancers and the non cancerous conditions so cancers like leukemia lymphoma we do get uh, this defective bone marrow in the immune system there are the several non cancerous hematological disorders where like uh, aplastic anemia it's a important indications we do go for transplant sickle cell anemia Uh, primary immunodeficiency disorders storage disorders the new new diseases like vexus syndrome so we do the bone marrow transplant to cure those diseases right it's a curative therapy it's not a just a palliative therapy it's a curative therapy so uh, during this procedure right we need the uh, a little uh, dedications from the whole uh, family and the patient sides so it's a little uh, longer journey patient need the hospital stay for almost uh, a month followed by the regular follow up visits which is extremely important to get the best outcome for the transplant uh, so that there is a certain uh, bare minimum requirement when we uh, look for some bone marrow transplant such as uh, we do need the good donor healthy donor who can give his own stem cells we need the the cancer especially the cancer should be in the better control before going for the transplant uh, patient's general health should be also in the better shape like uh, infections minimal infections uh, and he should be the good nutrition positions and certainly there is a need for some uh, finances and the commitment from the patient and the family side okay so now let's focus on the little bit detailer uh, on the on the bone marrow transplant let's have a deep dive into that so bone marrow transplant what i try to understand uh, what i understood and try to explain to my whole uh, whole patients and the family member there are four phases of the bone marrow transplant it uh, phase 1 uh, 2 and 3 are completed in the hospital during that first one month, month fourth phase when it start we try we discharge the patient and have a regular follow up so in the hospital that is in 30 days th- 30 days of the hospitalization the phase 1 consists of preparing the patient to accept the stem cells so that patient can accept the stem cell he will not reject the stem cells and to minimize the side effect of those stem cells so that happens during the first phase which lasts for around 7 days to 10 days depending on the what disease which we are treating it so that's the first phase uh, during this patient need the some chemotherapy sometimes we give the immunotherapy along with the radiation therapy also the second phase which consists which lasts only for a uh, for a few hours during which we infuse the stem cells to the patient through the uh, central line through the blood line like the transfusion will be like a uh, blood transfusion bag like that so that is a second phase which is for a one day so first phase preparing the patient second phase giving the stem cell that is for a day so now the third phase uh, which is longer than the first phase and the second phase that uh, that is for almost say around 14 days to the 16 days depending on the what type of transplant we are doing what sort of conditioning we have given the, to the patient before the tra- before the infusing the stem cells and this is extremely crucial phase because at this time point patient will develop the side effects related to the bone marrow suppression his counts will drop to almost zero level we need to support with the blood transfusions platelet transfusions in some cases the wbc transfusions as well we see they develop the fever nausea vomiting general health deteriorates they get the abdominal pain loose motion so so he, they need the extreme crucial care during this phase 3 uh, which again for last for around 14 to 16 days now at the end of the fourth phase the third phase we uh, as we enter to the fourth phase there's the in, there's a donor stem cell started to grow and we see the changes in the cbc numbers now the earlier the counts are extremely low they are needing the support and that happens the engraftment the neutrophils engrafted they start to engraft the numbers of neutrophils increases the wbc numbers are increasing and the platelets also show the requirement the platelet also show the increment in the numbers and they we see the anemia so the anemia also gets settled so there is the engraftment of the donor stem cells in the at the end of the phase 3 now when there is engrafted we move to the phase the patient moves to the phase 4 and during this phase 4 what happen what are the cells has engrafted and the patient the chemo and the radiotherapy whatever he received before the stem cells they 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 can 
create some some new sense to the patient in form of the two main complications we do get during this phase four and uh, the one is the gvsd second comes with the infections so the gvsd is related to the donor stem cells if the donor stem cells becomes more aggressive they are they proliferate in uncontrolled way especially the t cells they start to uh, proliferate in a, in a in a in a hyper way and so they start attacking the several other organs especially the three important organs liver so patient can have the jaundice they, they can attack on the uh, skins uh, then we do get the skin rash itching uh, and the uh, and the numbness sensations and then certain that the, finally the organ is the intestine so they do get the nausea vomiting diarrhea weight loss and a decrease in the appetite so these three organs are being affected during the gvsd which is a acute gvsd phase uh, second complication is the infection which also needs a close monitoring uh, especially the viral infections uh, comes into this time like a cmv infections ebv infections bk virus infections so and the uh, certainly the bacterial and the fungal infections based on the patient's general health and immune immune, immune systems and the cancer status during this the, the fourth phase uh, patient no need to be in the hospital this fourth phase goes for almost 6 months to 12 months during this fourth phase the patient follows to the to the us in the outpatient visit and then in case they need the uh, further uh, readmissions and then that we do in the during this phase fourth phase we monitor for the side effect in the fourth phase we monitor for the disease for which we have done the transplant we like it for a blood cancers or for the lymphoma or the benign diseases we look for this now finally comes the uh for the so this is so the transplant what i have understood in the in the in the practical language we divide the simple transplant simple allogeneic transplant when the patients are quite fit enough and there are chances of complications are less we do uh, uh at a continental hospital the complicated transplants also where the patient's disease is quite refractory is a refractory disease active disease we do the transplant on that cases patient has the other organs issues we are not fit for the simple transplant we take them uh, for the for the complicated transplant also we try to uh, make him as much as fit possible so before the transplants so that we can get the best outcome with the minimal side effect of the thank you